right, so video number three covers the third and final step in making our Black Forest Horse Ornament. So again, here's our final product, uh, you know, all sewn around the edge with the loop at the top so you can hang it from your Christmas tree or wherever you'd like to hang it. Uh, so how are we going to get to that point? So uh, in video number two, we did our stitching and I've finished stitching our, our horse face uh, since that video. So this guy is now all ready to go. He has all of his stitching. He's got all his little details on there. And so now all we've got to do is get the back. So back at the beginning, back in video one, I had you set aside all of these things. So the second red circle, this little bundle of floss and the little baggie of stuffing. And of course we need our needle. Um, so the first thing we want to do is unroll our floss. This is just, uh, wrapped up lightly so you want to find this little end here for this little section don't pull the one that's coming out because you'll end up making a knot make sure you find where it's wrapped around the middle unwrap that and then you have a nice long piece of floss here so you want to leave this floss this length which i know seems like it might be a little bit overwhelming but it saves you some steps of having to start new pieces of floss. So I'll, I'll show you how you can try to deal with this. So the first thing we have to do, like, is the same thing that we do with all of our other pieces of floss. Now, in this case, we are not separating it. We are not separating it out into the six di different threads and using only two. In this case, we are going to use the entire six strands. If you tried to separate a piece of floss this long, you would just end up with a giant knot. So don't give that a go. Use all six. Um, and now we're going to take our needle. It's going to be a little bit trickier to thread our needle because we have those six strands here. Let's see if I can get it on the first try. Oh, look at that. I am having some video luck with this particular set of videos. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll see that me threading the needle doesn't always go as well as that just did. Um, and then you go down to the other end and you want to put a knot in there. Again, I double knot this just to be safe so it doesn't pull through the felt. So there's one knot. And here is our second knot right on top of each other. Kind of use your fingers and your nails to keep the two knots on top of each other so that we have a nice knot. All right. Now, to try to manage this long piece of thread, you want to have your tail, so right now I don't have it pulled through very far, but pull it through more. In fact, I only have, so you'll see that we're to there and then down to our end. I only have, a, you know, a small portion out. The longer it is, the harder it is for you to manage, so try to pull that tail through and then we'll, we'll keep lengthening it out as we go. So the next thing we want to do is take our, our finished face and put it on top of our other circle. Sometimes they don't align perfectly well if you've been pulling on your face while you've been sewing it, or even they could have been cut a little wonky, but uh, line it up in the area that you're going to start sewing. Now, my personal preference is to always start sewing kind of down in this corner. Uh, not too much logic to that other than I figure if I start at the top, bottom, or side, the eye is going to be most drawn to that. So if I put it in sort of a nondescript location, I'm hoping it's going to blend in better. Um, but you can start wherever you want. All right, so now you're going to pick up your two circles, and here they are together. And the first thing we want to do to start our stitch is you want to come between the circles. So you're not actually even involving the back circle at this point. You're just going to come through the back of the front circle. And again, so the real key to this is going to be making our stitches very, very even. The stitches that we're going to be making here are bigger than what we used for the face. Uh, because it's really difficult to see the, the red on red, I have a backup ornament ready to go for you. So here's this black doodle that you can clearly see the black thread. And I'm going to uh, bring this one in as we work along so that you can really see what I'm doing. But you can see that the stitches that we have here are much bigger than what we used for the face. Um, you know, even when I do these, and again, I've done more than a thousand of these ornaments, um, the size of stitch I use sometimes varies depending on how I'm sewing on a given day. But the key is that is to have every stitch that you're making be as even as possible. So yes, the doodle you're looking at here, these are all hand stitched. For some reason, I'm, I'm 
particularly good at making even stitches. Uh, you will be too. You just got to do a little bit of practice. So don't get frustrated if it's not perfect or if you have to go slow at the beginning. Everything that you do takes a little bit of practice. All right, so here we are. We're starting with our needle between the two circles. So you're just coming up through the front face and make sure your needle is about, you know, down for the size of stitch that you're going to make. And then you've got to pull this big long tail through. And it is important that you keep track of that, that slack so that it doesn't get knotted. So don't be just rushing along and pulling things because you'll end up making a knot and that's going to take you a lot more time than it would have if you had just had some patience and gone slowly. So here we are, we're, I'd say about a quarter inch down here. Uh, and we've come through that, again, the back is not involved yet. Uh, the back will be involved shortly, but that first stitch, we're just hiding our knot between the two layers. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make our blanket stitch. So again, we wanna go over and down an equal amount. And now you're going to go through both layers. So see, I'm completely through both layers. And I'm gonna pull my needle through. In some ways, this is actually easier than uh, stitching on the face because you have more visibility of what you're doing. And it just so happens when I made that stitch, my needle ended up through the slack. So you, again, like when you were stitching the face, your thread wants to come through that loop and you're gonna come down and you wanna tighten it. Now, because this is the first stitch, you kind of don't wanna over tighten it. So that you, you need to have a little slack for when you're going to end. And I'm gonna show you that uh, on our, our, our doodle ornament there. So leave a little bit of slack and then come over and you're gonna make your next stitch. So over and down equal amounts and go through both layers come through the back. All right, so where is, see now, all right, I just gave myself a problem because my thread was looped that way. So now I've ended up with my slack. See, I've got a twist here. Can you see that? So if I tighten this up, I'm going to end up with a problem in, in my uh, stitch. I'm gonna have a twist to it. So see, I'm kind of through this figure eight. So I'm gonna thread my needle back through. So now I have my loop free and clear in my slack. So now I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. And now I've got my loop. I come through with my needle and I tighten. So as I sew, I also take my, my finger and hang on to that, make sure it's tightened. You, want, you don't wanna have any gap along the edge there. Can we see that? You want your thread riding right, right along the edge. So you can see that first stitch. And you're gonna keep doing this. So over and down and keep stitching through. Keeping your stitches as even as possible and going slowly so you don't knot up your thread. There we go. We pull, we straighten, so we have a nice straight stitch. We make sure we're even against the edge, and then we make our next stitch. Now, when I'm doing this, you know, when I'm not talking on a video, I can go a little bit faster than this, but not, not much faster. So you see, this time when I pulled through, it's gonna work out that my needle was through the loop. So you always just wanna make sure that you've got your loop and your thread is through it. If that happens as you're sewing because of where that slack is, that, that's a bonus for you. So again, pull tight, lay against the edge, straight stitches here, nice and even. We just keep doing that process. When this, this slack is really long and if it's behaving and hanging down, it is going to naturally end up so that your thread is where it's supposed to be, but you always wanna make sure that you've got your loop with your thread coming through it. And one more time, pull, I take my nail, I straighten, and there we go. See this one, it looks a little loose there. We can see some gap. I'll actually just take that, take the, the stitch next to it, pull it through so it's nice and tightened up there. You want to keep them so they're all just lying neatly. Now, don't pull it so hard that you're now wrinkling the material, though. Just, just tight enough so that it lays flat.
Now I'm gonna move over here onto this, this doodle ornament our good old labradoodle that we have here because it's so much easier to see these stitches so i'll do a few stitches on here and if you look carefully you can see some little dots i've actually taken some stitches out now the bonus when you're working with red on red the stitches are not so obvious so if you have a little bit of uneven evenness it's not the end of the world it actually kind of blends in when you're working with black on off white uh it's not subtle. So you can very clearly see if your stitches are even. So I'm gonna make one that's too big just to show you taking it out. Now, now that we're further along our ornament, our slack is much less. So you have to put your needle right through there. So see if we look at this, that one's a little bit bigger than I'd like it to be. So what do I do now? Well, I unthread my thread and now I just use my needle to help me here. And I capture that whole loop I just pull it out and start over and thread this back up. Oh boy, we're gonna we're gonna have to watch me thread a needle again. Do we think it's gonna is it gonna work out for me? I'm gonna help myself and, and trim off the edge there. Alright, there we go. Oh look at that. I am having such good needle threading luck on these videos. Alright, so I'm gonna put a few more stitches in here. And I'm gonna do this kind of at the speed at which I normally stitch. So you can get the feel for that. But I always do that little tightening step. That is not a shortcut that you can say, oh, well, I'll just skip the tightening. Nope. I do that on every single stitch that I make on every ornament I make. I pull it through, tighten it up, make sure it's laying along the edge that I like the size of the stitch. And I keep going. So see, you can't go like a speed demon here. Even, even I go relatively slowly doing this because you've got to get that little tightening in. It takes me about 15 minutes to get all the way around this edge when I'm not talking on a video. All right, so now here we are and we've got this little gap. Well, we need to get the stuffing into our ornament. So we're now going to take our little bag of stuffing and we're gonna take a little bit out of here. You probably are not gonna use everything that I've sent to you. I'm just gonna take half of what's in the bag for now. And I'm even gonna take a smaller piece there. And you're gonna put that through the hole. And we're gonna stuff that in. And with those first pieces that you put in there, you wanna make sure you take your finger and you stuff it to the other side. Now, we don't wanna stuff this too full. It'll look like a spaceship. Uh, we're just trying to make a lightly filled ravioli. Um, that's kind of the look that you're looking for. So I just keep taking small pieces of stuffing. Now don't wad it up too hard because then you won't be able to spread it out. I stick it in the hole, put it over to the side, and then I'm actually using my finger to kind of spread it out. So we've got kind of an even distribution in the hole. So I stuffed it here, then I stuffed it over here. Now I'm over here. And I take it and I spread it out and down and you'll see that I keep feeling it to see if I if I like how it's feeling. And if there's a spot that I think there's not enough stuffing, I'll stuff some more down in there. I need a little more stuffing out of my bag. And we're gonna put another piece in here. All right, so there we have, that's how much I've stuffed this. So we're not making, again, don't make a UFO where it's stuffed so full that it looks like it could fly through space. Just a nice, lightly stuffed ravioli. And now make sure that you've got your stuffing kind of pushed away from the edge here. I'll show you how we can redistribute that. So don't worry if it's a little bit away from the edge. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a technique in a minute here after we get around here. So now your stitch has got a little messed up. So you got to go back in. You got to tighten that up. And then we're going to start stitching again. Now, the next part of this is actually where I spend the most time reworking ornaments. Of course, I'm selling these, so they have to be even, so they look nice for everybody who orders them. You could perhaps be a little less fussy than what I'm going to be. But see, here's what the problem is. How do you know if you're going to have nice, even stitches in here? And there, <laughs> It's mostly luck, unfortunately. So let's see how it goes. So as I'm putting my stitches in... You can see my tail has gotten very short now and I'm still doing my pulling. Now, I got super lucky that this is going to work out. If it doesn't, um, go in and you're gonna end up having to take out some stitches and adjusting them. 
um, you know, make them a little bigger or a little smaller so that when you get over to here, in fact, this is gonna be that these stitches are a little bit bigger than some of the other ones but it, it, it'll be fine. This will end up looking fine. All right, so I get that last stitch in and I'm, I'm again, very, very lucky that this worked out so this is spaced evenly. If you, I've done this fixing in one of my other videos uh, on finishing. You can find that on YouTube and it'll show you how to adjust it, but basically it's just taking your stitches out and trying to fake it in. Um, if it doesn't bother you that they're not even, don't get stressed out. You shouldn't get stressed out anyway. It's a Christmas ornament, you know? Um, all right, so now what do we do to try to finish this? Now, the technique that we've been doing, and you should probably check this as you're sewing, gives you the same look on the back as you have on the front, all right? So if you're doing this correctly, you will have all of these same straight lines going here. Sometimes they're a little bit slanted, but in general, the, the back looks really close to what the front is, except of course, where we have this gap. So how am I gonna deal with that? So how do I finish this off so that the back looks good? You can see we've got a little bit of stuffing. Can you see that? See that little wisp of stuffing that's bothering me. So I'm gonna take my needle or my finger and shove it back down in there. You can also trim that off when you're done. I may have to do that because it's not behaving. All right, so finishing. Make sure your stitch is pulled nice and tight and straight and even. I'm taking my thumbnail and putting it there to hold it. Now we're going to take our needle and we're going to pick up this loop. So you see, I picked up that front loop that we did and I put my needle going down towards my face. And we're gonna come and we're gonna pull, our, pull this through and we're gonna tighten. Now see how even that looks now? But we still have this problem that we have the gap on the back. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, put your thumb, hold that in place because it's nice and even now and you don't want it to slide out while you're doing this. So thumb right there holding that stitch in. Now we're gonna take our needle and go right through that stitch. And I know that's really hard to see. So I've taken my needle and I've gone right through that stitch and I'm gonna pull all of my needle and my thread through. Now I've got this loop. We're gonna make a knot that's going to secure this. So here is my thread, there's my loop. I am going to go to the opposite side so in this case, we're looking, we're gonna to go to the right. We're going to go through the loop, pull the slack all the way through. Now make sure you're still holding here because as soon as you tighten this, you really can't undo it. So make sure everything still looks good here. And then you're going to pull this slack here. And you can see, we just made a little knot along that edge. So our Spacing is still good, but now we still have this gap on the back. So here's what we do with that. We're taking our needle, we're going to put it, see how all of these stitches are here? We're gonna place our needle so the point is right where you'd want it to go in so that it's gonna be equally spaced here. You're gonna put the point in, do not go through to the other side. We're just got our needle floating around in the stuffing. And then you're gonna to wanna to press your needle up so it comes back through the back. I know this seems weird, but trust me on this. Um, you're gonna come through the back and you're gonna pull this through. And look at that. So now over here, we have fixed our stitches here so there's no longer a gap. You can see I pulled it a little extra tight, but we actually kind of want to do that because now what we're going to do is we're going to trim this. Now to do this so that the end goes back into your ornament, you want to pull it with just a little bit of tension and snip it right near the back. Now we can see we still have a little bit of floss sticking out here. We're going to take our needle. We're going to stick it into the middle of our ravioli kind of thing. And if you just move it back and forth, see if you catch that little floss that's inside our ornament and you just wave your needle around, it disappears into your ornament. So now we're nice and secure. The edge on the front and the back look good. Now I said, now 
What if your stuffing has moved away from where you did that sewing? You can use that same stick the needle into the center trick. So again, we can stick our needle in, not through the back, and you can just kind of push your stuffing around with the end of your needle. So I'm gonna actually move some stuffing out to the edge here and kind of tighten that up. That kind of makes it look a little prettier. Again, I'm making these to sell, so I have to be you know, pretty fussy with them but I wanna show you all the techniques so you can get a really nice professional product and just pull that stuffing down. Now I can feel as I'm doing this, there's a little divot there. I'm gonna take my needle through the back, fix it up. And now I have a nice equally stuffed ornament. All right, so the last thing that you need to do is add your hanger. So you may have enough floss left on your needle after you do the edge, you may not. I don't in this case. In your kit, I have supplied you with an extra piece of floss. So if we look at our floss from our little pack that we did our sewing, um, it, remember we were doing a red ornament so you'd have a red extra piece. I'm gonna take the black out of here because we're gonna finish this off. Uh, on this, this black ornament. I'm gonna take that piece and this is actually longer than you need it to be. We're gonna, let's see if I'm three for three on this. I think I'm gonna trim the edge. All right. Let's see if I can thread this. Oh, look at that, three for three. All right, so now I've got this shorter piece in my needle. Now you do not want to go this way, just stick your needle through. Cause what'll happen when you go to hang this is your ornament's gonna hang sideways and that's disappointing. What you wanna do is put your needle through this way so that your loop is going to be facing, if we look at our finished one, see our loop is like through there. So when you hang this, the loop is facing the right direction. So find your center, it's gonna be like here for me and I just hold this and then I use the back and I just, I don't know if we can see this, I'm gonna go right here you know, kind of halfway between. I'm just gonna catch the back of this. I always try to make sure that I have one of my stitches in in uh, the loop so that I'm, I'm sure that it's gonna hold securely. So we've just gone, see that? I've just picked up a piece through the back here. So this go in this side, come out that side, and then we're gonna pull our floss through. All right, and I'm gonna take my needle right off. We don't need it anymore. So you can see there that now we have our hanger so that when you hang it on your Christmas tree, it's going to be hanging the right direction. Now you can even these off. I usually make my hanger about like this so you can see we have a bunch of extra floss here. I just make a knot. So we're gonna knot that up. Pull it tight. I leave probably a quarter inch here. Trim the ends, and there you go. You have your ornament all set, ready to hang on your Christmas tree. So again, I did that on that other ornament so you could see it better uh, because this red on red is really hard to see, but it's also your friend <laughs> because you don't have to worry as much about your stitches being even. But imagine that I did all of that here and we end up with this as our final result. So there is our Black Forest Horse Ornament, the Summer Ornament of 2022.